taking away the milk. Oh, it's shit, it's called milk. I'm lactose intolerant. Well, you should stop drinking. I'm going to feel that in the morning. Is it easier for you to have like a Scottish English accent or Australian? I don't know. I don't actually notice when my accent changes. Other people do. Uh, I guess what, the more I drink, the more Scottish it gets, right. which, which like, when I do elocution classes, you know, people that, that, that run them for me like, well, that's because that's your, that's your true. Yeah. Soul is Scottish. Right. That's what comes out when you're drunk. I'm also an asshole when I'm drunk. <laughs> so, right? It turns out I'm both Scottish and an asshole. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Top Techno Philly G, and I'm your host, Philly G. Today we have a special guest, Darren McMullen. <laughs> you seem confused about that. No, I'm just you, saying it. I want to get it right. You'd like almost fuck up my name there. I don't want to. <laughs> so, uh, Darren is originally um, a Scotsman. Yeah. First 12 years, he yeah. grew up. Right? Yeah, in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, boarding school, the whole thing? Uh, no, I didn't go to boarding school. Uh, I got kicked out of a lot of schools in Scotland, actually. I think the first time I was told that the school didn't want me back was in my very first year at school. Uh-huh. And there was a little bit of a, a toe rag, as my mum would say, uh, and hard work. And they just asked me not to come back. And then I went to a lovely school called Morrison's Academy. Uh, Ewan McGregor went there actually as well. Went oh. to the same school as Ewan McGregor. He was a lot older than me though. A lot older. He's not really that much older, but it's a little creative license here. Um, and um, following his tailwinds? No, not quite. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'd love to. I'd love to have the career Ewan's had. Very jealous of his Star Wars in, in particular. Really? Yeah, get to play Obi Wan. Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge, one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I always wanted to play. Um, his role in a Moulin Rouge the musical. I've been talking about that for 12 years. And I was like, what's your dream role? Like, I want them to make a musical of Moulin Rouge and I want to play Hugh McGregor's role in that. And then finally, they did make a Moulin Rouge musical. Yeah. And I got the, op- the opportunity to audition for it, but for the Duke. Okay. And I was like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I think you missed it. I've been talking about this for 12 years. And like, oh, bless. You're just a little, you're just a little too old. They're, they're aging down for that role. I'm like, what? Oh, man. It's like, yeah, he's like these, you know, the, the guy who plays Ewan's roles in his 20s. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. So Darren um, is quite famously a judge, and he was judged, as we just found out. Um, so on our show, we like to learn about people's right creative being, how, what makes them them, and we also like to learn how you're grinding it out. Right? Yeah. Um, so first, let's learn about... Um, they don't call him a host. A lot of times, as I did my research, they call him a presenter. Yeah. Yeah, they, they call that. Americans call them hosts. UK is presenter. And then Australia is kind of a mix of both. Like, you can you can get away with both. But if you if I said I was a, a host in, um, in, in the UK, they'd probably think I was somebody that was going to take, you know, like some... Uh, Businessmen from out of town, out you know, on the right. town, and maybe give them a little hand job at the end. That's probably what they. <laughs> I was going to say fluff him. He was a little more. <laughs> so twelve, you got you moved to Australia, yeah, and you just start like a great career of, um, you know, I. Of course, you finished out school. Yeah, well, I, I went back and forward though, like because I, I came to Australia when, when I was twelve, but. When I was 16, I went back and lived with my grandparents for a bit, which was great because my, my grandfather soon after actually developed cancer mm-hmm. and, and and died quite quickly with it. And uh, it was just so magical that I got to spend that almost like seven, eight months living with them yeah. in their house to have that, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and then I came back and went back into school again. Um, but nobody seemed to realize that I'd just been gone. Right. For like seven, eight months, no, and hadn't still. done the year before, right. and they just let me go into the next year. <laughs> I think, I think nobody knows that to this day. They do now. Keep it moving. Uh, yeah, just put them in the next class, and um, then I went back again to the UK. I think nineteen. Then I lived there in my kind of early twenties, uh, in London, Scotland, and then you know I lived in LA uh, in New York for the last ten years before the pandemic, and happened to be back filming in Australia when, when the world kind of closed down and I had a, well, I didn't really have a choice to make. They just weren't letting anybody out. You know, right. like, went back to the prison colony days. Yeah. Nobody leaves. In Australia, right? That's, yeah. If you do your research, that's where they sent the bad boys. And this is the bad yeah. boy. I mean, look, he got kicked out of school. And yeah. 
ADHD, um, that's it. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is what ADHD stands for, but it's quite the opposite. It's an abundance of attention. Like you can't handle yeah. how much stimulus is coming to you at one time. So, yeah. and you you get very distracted. It, what it is a deficiency of is dopamine. Really, you're constantly looking for things to stimulate you. Bright shiny objects. I have a million and one hobbies because of it, and it's I got fired from every job I've ever done in my entire life until I got into the entertainment industry. And I think really within this in the industry, it's a superpower I have. Well, if you say, for example, you know, I was a, the host slash presenter of The Voice for many years. Now, in that kind of environment, I'm talking to, you know, five million people at home. I'm reading an auto cue. I'm talking to the four coaches on the show. I'm performing to the 2,000 people that are in this, the, the stadium, the audience, and I'm interviewing somebody that's come off stage. All the while, I've got at least three producers talking in my ear, giving me different cues. Right. And I'm... Under chaos, I have complete calm. I think it was my ADHD brain. And yeah. it is like, because it, it's going so fast and so quick. In chaos, there is calm. I can't pay a parking bill on time. I'll have a full conniption. I can't do day to day activities without having a breakdown. You ask me to pack a suitcase, I'll have a full crying meltdown. Right. But, like, if, if there's a chaotic decision yeah. and a huge, big, spontaneous decision, I'll yeah. make it like that easy. Did they ever put you on, like, medicine? Yeah, they gave me all the meds. I've tried, you know, I've made my way through every I single guess. one they've had. Um, but I don't really like them. You know, I, I, if, maybe if I, if I have to really, really... Sometimes your ADHD kicks off a lot harder than others, and I literally just can't concentrate on anything. Right. And if that happens to fall on a day where I have to do lots of life admin or writing and be focused in one place, then I might, I might take some, like something... Uh, you know, but I tried the Ritalin and that was too heady for me. Dexamphetamines, there was too like speedy. I always found it interesting that like to calm people down who are on a, at a high speed, they give you something to speed you up to calm you down. Yeah. Through your career in Australia, mm. as the host, the presenter of various shows, mm. right? Yeah. Um, quite a, I'm, I'm somewhat envious just that he's had a great variety and one of the shows I think that I would like to do maybe at some point is something like The Outsider. Oh, The Outsider, yeah, The Outsider was really fun. The great, tell, tell them what The Outsider well, well, the great thing about that, there's, there's a few moments in my career. It's like a travel show, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like, it was, it was one that we, like, it was, I kind of came up with, with this guy I just met on a pub crawl in Edinburgh, in mm. Scotland. Yeah. And he introduced me to, I always get this wrong when I tell the story. I can't remember if it's whiskey sour or the other whiskey drink. <laughs> oh, I was thought, this, what was it? I think it was whiskey sours he introduced me to. Or old fashions. It was old fashions. Old fashions. Okay. He introduced me, I was like, I never had an old fashioned because you're kidding me. Like we're going to the pub crawl. We went to all the Edinburgh bars, like just trying to like, you drink the best old fashioned and we were coming up with ideas along the way. And this idea came about doing this, like, talk show where we just take this couch with us wherever we went and interview complete weirdos wherever we went. And that kind of manifested eventually into outsiders where we would go into subcultures of people all around the world, uh, whether it was devil worshippers, uh, underground cults, uh, <laughs> I don't know, alien worshippers, all these like really strange subsets of people, people still living as Vikings in the north of uh, Sweden, like thinking they're in that history channel the Vikings, show. Yeah. yeah, like they had a king and everything. <laughs> and uh, it was just the most fascinating show to do. Um, and that all came from a pub crawl uh, on Whiskey Sours. I think you might have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with people generally as we have come to find out that someone took a bat to his moped. Yeah, they did. I it's mean, not a moped. So, yeah, it was, it was a Vespa. Yes. A Vespa. Very sexy Vespa. And I parked it just down the road in, in, in Hollywood the other day and I came out with my appointment 30 minutes later and somebody had taken a bat to it. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just somebody had a real problem with Vespas or well, we were talking about that like, ride scooters. I don't know. I think it's LA generally. We were talking yeah. about like LA has a different kind of feel. Is that yeah, right? yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I was locked in Australia. It was the worst place to be trapped, I guess. But for about two and a half years, I wasn't able to come and go freely. So I've just come back after two and a half years. Um, I just I didn't notice a massive difference in the city, and not in a good way. It's, it feels like quite a sad city at the moment. Yeah. And you know, going down Sunset, and seeing the issues with the with homeless people and the drugs, and um, you know, it's 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 feeling it's, it almost feels like it's still 
hasn't bubbled over as far as it's even going to bubble over before right. it's going to get fixed. Right. I mean, there's so many things about like, um, you know, you talk about LA being in a weird spot, like the industry, if I may say, um, Hollywood, I think Hollywood is like, not just Hollywood here, Hollywood's like the industry, right? Mm. And what do we put upon such ourselves? A, such an American thing to say is, <laughs> yeah, it's not just here, it's the whole industry's Hollywood, forgetting about Bollywood and Nollywood and the Australian well, film industry like, and the British film industry and some are, of the amazing I mean, stuff coming out of This is what we call Canada, American yeah. exceptionalism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying like, specifically when you look at like the charade of like the, you know, the Academy Awards and stuff like this is oh, worldwide, yeah. this is what I'm referring yeah, to, yeah. art product that yeah. is beamed around across the galaxy yeah. for all to enjoy yeah. and you know we then we find out the big farce that it is yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> really i mean it has been for several years and um uh, i do you know i i have watched the academy awards religiously probably since i was 13 years old and dreamed of going there one day and blah 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 and to be quite honest i didn't know it was on this year i was on the golf course when it was playing and no idea it was on and no interest in it and then all of a sudden my phone's blowing up with all these things of the will smith slap and all the rest of it i'm like what and like everyone else i looked at that right when i was like oh that's fake come on bs i mean these people should not be looked up to as some kind of superhuman beings they're just people with flaws like everybody else and in fact you know, even worse because you gave them a bunch of resources to yeah. accentuate their yeah dysfunctions yeah if i may yeah well you may you very much may and you were talking about the uh you know, the mass discrepancy in wealth. And it just seems a bit tone death of Hollywood to be throwing that event there in the Kodak Theater when outside you have people living yeah. in tents and smoking crack on Literally, the streets. Literally, like on the corner. Yeah, right? on the corner. Yeah. And then you're, you, they're dressing up in gowns worth the price of houses yeah. and showering themselves in praise yeah. about how amazing they are and this art form, this craft, and it's like, fuck so off. So did that, us. yes, yes, and yeah. did that translate to the Met Gala then, obviously? Oh my, I couldn't believe that's still a thing. I, right? What is that? You just had this thing, and now you're having this the thing. The Met Gala? I was like, what, what even is this? <laughs> Stupid thing. And you had that um, so, Ryan Reynolds' uh, wife, what's her name? So I forget her name, uh, Mind Blank. She was in Gossip Girl. God, what's her name? I'm sorry, no. what, what's her name? Oh no, married to Ryan Reynolds, you know? Uh, no. Damn, all, all right. right. Go ahead. People hate me for not remembering her name. Um, Kate, is it Kate something? Maybe, should we look it up real quick? Um, anyway, she had this dress that changed color and everyone was raving, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing we've ever seen. This is fantastic. It was all over the news. And, you know, like before that, it was Will Smith was all over the news. Yeah. Like, have we forgot about Ukraine? Have we forgot about multi-billionaires, like taking the piss out of us and giving themselves tax breaks? Yeah. Like, it's like, look over here, guys. Look at this Will Smith thing. Isn't this terrible? Oh, quick. Oh, they're getting over Will Smith. Let's give him something else. Shiny dresses. Look over here. It's uh, Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Thank you, Close. Blake Lively. Thank you. Blake Lively. Yeah. No, and you were saying All You Need Is Love. First of all, there's the movie All You Need Is Love, right? But yeah. In Moulin Rouge, once again, they have... All You Need Is Love. All you need is love, love is just a fool. All you need is love, love is just a game. All you need is love, love is just a game. I was meant for loving you, baby. You were meant for loving me. The montage. The only way of loving you, baby, <laughs> is to pay a lovely fee. Right. Just one night, just one night. There's no way, cause you can pay. I mean, I could go all night with Mulan Rouge. Love it! Baz. Baz. Right? Legend. I'm That's your email, to too. How's that your email? Did you steal it from him? No, I'm Daz. Oh, Daz. 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 Yeah, Sorry, Daz. Bad. Daz. Darren in Australia gets converted to Daz all the time. They shorten names uh, or add O's to names. Hmm. What's your surname? Uh, my last name? Yeah. Goldner. Goldie. G. You be yeah, Goldie. Goldie. What's up, Goldie? Hey, I like it. G-Man. Philly G. You be the G man. <laughs> Philly. I like G man. G man. Yeah. Big G. Let's <laughs> go. Happening. I'm looking forward to Elvis though. Oh, the movie? This mm -hmm. new movie coming out. That looks really good. From the clips. Yeah. Mm. He's uh I was asking someone about you were saying 
Like if you go to, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm from Memphis. You know, if you go to Elvis's house now, yeah, watch out. Oh yeah, you're getting robbed blind. Really? Yeah. It's just like waiting around for you to come out and then rob you. Well, I mean, you're good if you're in front of the house or at the gift shop. But yeah, let's say you walk down the street to get food. I wouldn't walk down the street to get food. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Just got fucking got rough. So, in other words, this movie is like a feeder for the thieves at the house. They're waiting, Very, right? Everyone's going to yeah. be like, let's go to Elvis's house. They're renewed interest. And these guys are like, yes. Wow. Or no, I don't know. I don't know that to be the case. You know how Memphis is in the playoffs right now for basketball? Yeah, yeah. They have to have the games earlier so it's not too late at night so it doesn't get too crazy. Jesus. That's it. Is that great? So it's not just L.A. The whole country's uh, <laughs> it's really in a bit of a pickle, isn't it? Do not ride the Vespa. To Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> do not do that. Are you guys still interested? Do you want to hear, like, should we kind of bring it to a close here? Anything that you got coming up that you want to tell people about? Um, no. Do you have any, um, like, life sayings? Like, what is there anything that describes you as a person? You seem very liberal, right? Mm -hmm. John Lennon is a dreamer. Mm -hmm. You're a dreamer. Yeah. As well. And I, I would assume you bring that around the world. Um, when you meet people, I mean, you're a worldly person. I'm just, I'm just a big fan of authenticity, and I would say, like, you know, don't be, don't be the second best somebody else. Be the, the best you in the world. And um, I don't know. I just try and I try and be myself. I, I try not to fit into molds that people kind of expect me to fit into. People like yourself, Phil. Or like, when are you getting married? And when are you having kids? Know, right? I'm like, right? Yeah. As you know, the hustle. Dude, the hustle it that's never what it's stops. All about. And even when you think it stops, that's it doesn't. You get like a most. Yeah, like when you get too comfortable, then you're like, oh man, this job's this job and this money's gonna be right forever. Well, I mean, the reason Darren's here is because he, we filmed a little spot for a charity, right? Mm. So I mean, yeah, yeah. So I'm on yeah, Celebrity Apprentice in Australia. I'm about to do that, and I was working with a charity called Field of Magic. It's a great charity. It's the only charity in Australia that actually looks after kids who are grieving the loss of a parent or a loved one, uh, and a lot of uh, well, one in 20 actually kids under the age of 18 have lost uh, a parent in Australia and uh, the statistics on the implications that has with mental health issues and substance abuse issues and God forbid sometimes suicide moving forward um, are quite significant so what they do is they throw these wonderful camps where the kids get to go to camp and meet other kids in the same situation so they don't feel as ostracized because you can imagine if you've lost a parent every every uh, parent teacher day at school every mother's day every father's day every sports day is this constant reminder that you're a little bit different right. than everybody else so but the, the other great thing they do is they all get um, their own little um, camp therapist as well to be able to work through the grief head on so they, they, they get kids so that would be really like tough. face to face or virtual yeah yeah doing yeah there's really tough tough things for kids to deal with but yeah. if you don't knock that on the head now it doesn't manifest into issues later in life so it's good to it's good to you know deal with the tough stuff now and be like you know well, you're not you're probably never going to get over the death of your parents to be honest you've just got to you've just got to accept a way that you can move forward with the rest of your life but you're never not going to be sad about it it feels like it gives them a safe place to smile it's a good line, actually. Yeah. It does. It does give them a safe place. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Feelthemagic.org.au. If you're watching this in Australia and you know somebody that's grieving the loss of a loved one and they're a child, now they do. They do really fabulous work, and you know we managed to raise a lot of money on Celebrity Apprentice for them, which was great. And 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 it's a grassroots charity too, so it, it will all go to good use, which is which is good to see sometimes. You know, like the Ronald McDonald houses of the world have got millions and millions and millions of dollars pumped in every year, and they yeah. can't always utilize all the money, but they'll utilize all the money. So it's good. There we go. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is the Shutter Dash. No, it's not. This is Talk Talk with Philly G. I'm your host, and today we have another presenter. I feel some kind of a presenter tension here. It's not coming yeah. from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. I'm glad you, you came by. It was great to meet you. Yeah, yeah, you too, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nick. Same are, one, Nick. Are we going to record the next one? Or? Maybe. Yeah. Hit, hit record. <laughs>